Hi everyone, I'm Zenzo with Aquarium Co-op and today we're gonna cover one of my favorite fish, the green spotted puffer. Now the green spotted puffer is a wonderful fish to keep. They're a lot of fun, they're interactive, they're beautiful to look at, and they're kind of in that wet pet category. Now the green spotted puffer originates in Southeast Asia and it lives in rivers and estuaries kind of near the ocean, which we'll cover here in a little bit. As far as their appearance, they are a medium sized fish. So generally for adults are gonna be between four to six inches in length and uh, quite stout because they are a puffer. So think of like a like an egg almost, so like an extra large egg, kind of that shape as far as uh, their body size and their body shape. Um, when you find them in stores, they'll usually be two to three inches or so in length and just expect them to get about double that size when they're fully grown. Now first, let's start off with tank requirements. So what size tank do you need? What do you need to put in the tank? All that stuff. So for a green spotted puffer, they are pretty active fish. They're active swimmers. They're gonna be swimming back and forth in that aquarium and kind of moving around and hunting, which we'll cover here in a moment. So you're gonna want a rather spacious aquarium. Generally speaking, you want about a minimum of a 30 gallon aquarium, but a 40 gallon breeder would be better or even anything larger like a 55, obviously. Try to think about, you know, making sure that you have at least like a 40 gallon tank for your green spotted puffer um, as that's gonna give them more space. Now, earlier I had mentioned that in the wild, green spotted puffers are in rivers and estuaries near the ocean. And that's because the adults are brackish. Brackish is a mixture of fresh water and salt water, usually in the areas where a river or an estuary meets the ocean and you have that mixture. So a green spotted puffer is gonna require brackish water because they do require that mineral content that is found in that reef environment. Now setting up a brackish aquarium is not difficult at all. So I don't want to scare away any of you. In fact, we put together an article that's very easy to understand that takes you step by step through the process. And you can find that article on the Aquarium Co-op website, which we'll put a link down below. Now, as I shared, this fish does require brackish water. So you are gonna wanna make sure that you're able to provide for that and learn how to put a brackish aquarium together. Now you probably, when you buy your, your green spotted puffer, most likely the store that has them has kept it in fresh water. So it probably went from a brackish environment where it was caught or raised and transported to a wholesaler or something like that uh, via fresh water and then in the stores, probably in a freshwater uh, system as well. And they can live in freshwater, but they don't thrive. So you are gonna want to reacclimate your green spotted puffer back to brackish water. So this is done over a period of weeks and the, and the article that we uh, created on the Aquarium Co-op website covers all of that. Now, as far as substrate, you can really use any kind of substrate or you can even do a bare bottom aquarium, um, depending on where you live and your water parameters. We would recommend using like a crushed coral or a uh, aragonite sand as it does have the buffering qualities that does keep the water parameters right where they should be. Now, regarding water parameters, it's brackish and you're gonna wanna have it somewhere between 1.004 on a specific gravity range up to a full marine environment of 1.022. So with brackish water, it fluctuates all the time. You don't have to be exact. Just make sure that you're making a brackish tank and that it's somewhere in that range. They are tropical fish, so you will need a heater. Anywhere between 76 degrees and about 82 degrees Fahrenheit would be fine for the fish. And a pH level somewhere between 7.5 and about 8.2 to 8.5. They can survive in all of those ranges. Now with your aquarium, it is important to have good water quality. So if you're lazy with maintenance, if you're not good at cleaning up uneaten food or fish waste, then this might not be the fish for you. You wanna really make sure that it has a clean environment and that you're testing for excess nitrates, etc. Now you can have plants in your brackish tank. There are not a lot of plants that do well in salt water. So I've had success with Java fern and with mangroves, and there might be some other brackish plants that are in your area that you have access to that might be able to work. Just know that you are gonna have to keep up on your water changes and won't be able to rely on plants doing a lot of that natural filtration for you. Next, let's talk about feeding your green spotted puffer. Now, like with most puffers, it does require a little bit more thought process and work for the owners with puffers because they do have some specific dietary requirements. Now the green spotted puffer is a carnivore or a piscivore. Basically it needs to eat meaty type food. So that can be fresh, frozen, freeze dried. Um, they're not really gonna take to pellets and flake foods and things like that. So you are going to need to have 
uh, the ability to keep uh, frozen and fresh and even freeze dried foods. So things like frozen bloodworms will be fine. You wanna have an ample supply of snails. They'll eat things like uh, freeze dried shrimp, freeze dried insects like mealworms and crickets, and as well as the live versions of those. So live mealworms obviously, live shrimp if you have a bunch of shrimp or you have coals or whatever that you need to just kind of filter through. Um, they will eat those small crabs. Um, they can pretty much take down anything with a shell that's at least like half its size. And I've seen it do some, some pretty spectacular things in my care. So puffers have a beak and those beaks need to continually be worn down. So you're gonna wanna make sure that a couple of times per week when you're feeding your puffer that they are getting some type of hard food like a snail shell or the shell on the back of a shrimp. Having a tank that might be dedicated to snails so that you have a continual supply or just having a tank that has snails in them where they kind of do their thing and reproduce often and you're able to catch those and feed them to your puffer, that would be an ideal situation. But what about other fish in a tank? You might be wondering, what else can I put in a green spotted puffer aquarium? And that's kind of tricky. So they are aggressive, like a lot of puffers, very feisty and can be pretty aggressive towards other fish. So you are gonna wanna make sure that the fish that you put in there are large enough or fast enough or feisty enough on their own to not be bothered by the green spotted puffer. So that would be things like probably large mollies that are that obviously can live in brackish water, night gobies, monos, scats, um, any kind of larger, hardier brackish fish would be okay. Now, if you wanna keep another green spotted puffer or another type of brackish puffer, then you are gonna need a larger aquarium than that 40 breeder that we talked about. Probably a minimum of 55 gallons, but it would be better if you were 75 gallons or larger. And if you do that, you are gonna need a lot of decor in that tank to have hiding places, line of sight breaks so that the puffer here doesn't see the puffer there and kind of go after that. So uh, just know that if you are planning on keeping multiple of these in one tank, you are gonna need to go larger. You are gonna need to manage the decor of the aquarium to break them up a little bit. And even if you do all that, there's no guarantee that they're gonna to live together well. So uh, just be prepared for that. Now, a little bit more about the green spotted puffer and their behavior. They are very intelligent. So you might not think about like fish as being intelligent, but in the fish world, puffers are pretty intelligent and you'll see them being very inquisitive kind of looking around, analyzing things. They've got these big eyes, obviously, so their visual acuity is pretty good. And they will actually know who is the owner and who's not, so they'll recognize you and they'll learn to like eat out of your hand and things like that. So as far as that wet pet, they are fun because you can't interact with them. So overall, the Green Spotted Puffer, a very fun fish to keep great to look at, fun to interact with. When people come over, they will be drawn to that fish. Every time people come into this room and they walk around, they look at all the beautiful cichlids and the big Oscars and things like that. They immediately, when they get over there, they bend down and look at their green spotted puffer and spend a lot of time looking at it because it's a very fun fish. So if you happen to get one, I'm sure you will also enjoy it. And hopefully this video helped you in learning more about the fish. If you'd like to get some more stocking ideas on aquariums, watch this video right here.